Hello. Today, I'm going to be painting this tortoise in acrylic and talking about my strategies for preventing artist block. My name is Blake, and this is Mayday Paintings. Here's the colors I used to make this painting. And here's how they look on the palette. This palette paper is served for a few paintings, so it's pretty messy. For brushes, nothing fancy just a few cheap synthetic rounds and flats. I'm going to use a silhouette technique to paint this tortoise. I am starting with a dark, in this case, raw umber, to draw and fill in the shape of the tortoise. Then paint the lighter areas and details on the top of the dark. This should speed up the painting and unify things more easily since there is a lot of shadow and wrinkles on the tortoise's body. This is a technique that works really well with acrylics since the paint dries quickly. I chose this image to paint by using one of the strategies that helps me to avoid artist block. Artist block isn't something that I often struggle with. It isn't that I don't have times when I don't feel like drawing or painting. Those times definitely happen, but I am prepared for them. There are two quotes that I keep in mind whenever it's time to paint but I don't feel like it, or I don't feel like I have a good enough idea. The first one comes from Pablo Picasso. Inspiration exists, but it has to find you working. And the second one is from Chuck Close. Inspiration is for amateurs. The rest of us just show up and get to work. There's more to that quote, but that's the part I readily remember. I don't remember where, but I recently heard someone say, that if they don't feel like drawing, they make a deal with themselves that they only have to draw for five minutes. Of course, after five minutes, they are fully engaged in drawing, so they continue on. It's starting that is the hard part. The trick is to get starting out of the way so that you can get on with your art. For me, getting started usually just means picking something and getting to it. It doesn't have to be the best or greatest idea I've ever had, just something that I can get going on. The most effective way to find something to get going on is to surround yourself with things that inspire you, things that make you curious. I have a good sized collection of artist books, and if I need direction, I will pull one off the shelf and look through it. A straightforward thing to do is to make a study of a work by an artist you love. Try to get into their head and learn by copying their technique or composition. This can put your mind into motion and lead to work that is based on similar ideas. I have a Hokusai book that I probably paid $15 for that has inspired dozens of paintings that don't necessarily look like Hokusai, but are continuations on his ideas of what to paint and use his beautiful color palette. Beyond art books, it's also helpful to just have books full of interesting pictures. A constant source of inspiration is a few Time Life nature books I bought at a thrift store. What's great about these is that they are filled with great pictures of animals and plants and have easily digestible bits of information about them. Many artists might not see the point in gathering books for reference material since you can Google whatever you want to draw and get thousands of great pictures. But if every artist is just Googling what they want to draw, Google is curating what pictures they see first. There have been a couple of times I knew exactly what picture a drawing or painting was from because I had searched for the same thing and drawn from the same picture. If you have a book from the 70s, there is a smaller chance that another artist is going to be using the same reference picture. It's not impossible, but less likely. I am also a book fan. I like looking through a book and being inspired by a new picture that I may have overlooked last time I thumbed through the pages. It also is helpful to make some viewfinders that are the size or proportions of what you will be painting on. You can use them to help frame your composition from the picture in the book. Another habit I have developed that helps me prepare to defeat artist block is taking my own pictures of things I find interesting out in the world. It's really amazing that we now all have phones with great cameras on them, and we usually are carrying them with us all the time. 
I take a lot of landscape and nature pictures when I am walking my dog, which I will paint from if I don't know what to paint. Sometimes I'll just look through my phone and put a whole lot of potential painting pictures on the computer I use to paint from. So if I need an idea, I have some ready to go. Sometimes even just having leftover paint will guide me to what to paint next. For the tortoise I'm painting, I had a bunch of brown, yellow, and greens in my palette left over from the previous painting. I don't like to waste paint, so I just pick up one of my nature books and look for something I could paint with those colors. Sometimes I'll also just scrape all of the leftover paint together in a pile and use it for the background of my next painting, or as a color to mix in with white and a darker color. Reusing paint like this is a fun way to connect paintings to each other. I'll have two or three paintings in similar colors because I use the same palette leftovers. Another strategy I use is starting a new painting at the end of the day. If I finish a painting and still have a couple hours left to work, I'll get the next one started. Before quitting, I'll decide what I'm painting and put down a rough sketch or the first layer of paint so that when I come in the next day, I already have something going and can get right to it. Again, a critical step in defeating artist block is removing obstacles to starting. I hope these ideas help. Don't overthink it. Just get some art made. Even if your idea isn't mind-blowing, working on it could lead to an idea that is. At the very least, you will be practicing your skills for when inspiration gives you the big idea for your one true masterpiece, or whatever. One more quote for you. Success occurs when opportunity meets preparation. According to the internet, Zig Ziglar said that. He was a motivational speaker and self-help book writer, so it seems fitting for the topic. Well, I'm taking the tape off this painting, so that means the video is almost over. Remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on Instagram for more painting content. Thanks for watching. See you next time.